All right, Ed, how's Paris? I mean, you're at the Olympics for crying out loud. How are things? Well, Paris is amazing. It's 1130. I'm sorry that uh, we didn't do this a little bit earlier because I had a nice spot located right uh, outside the Eiffel Tower. You could see it in the background and you'd be really jealous. But right now I'm in my cramped, uh, unconditioned, unair un conditioned uh, hotel room. Uh, but I'm still loving life because I just got back from the track and it was an amazing uh, evening of track and field uh, performances. And I've kind of said, uh, man, Europe does a great job when they host the Olympic Games because we had, what, 80,000 people making a lot of noise uh, during all the races. And I think the, the athletes were pumped. And as a result, we saw some, some otherworldly uh, performances and uh, and we had one of our old uh, own dear uh, Cougars participating tonight as well, and Courtney Wayman. It was cool. Yeah, we're, we're going to get into some of those specifics in in just a second. I do want to ask you a big picture question because, you know, this this is something that going into the Olympics, we were talking about all of the BYU athletes that were going to be uh, able to represent their country, but also BYU. For, from from your perspective. Can you put into words what it means for the BYU program to have so many athletes in this year's Olympics? Well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's been in this process for a long time. And, you know, we're all uh, kind of building on the shoulders of the legends and giants that have preceded us. But it's just, it's fun to have, to come to a meet and see uh, seven uh, Cougars. Uh, representing their their country, six of whom are running for the U.S. and and then one for uh, Canada, and so it's uh, you know it fills us with pi uh, with pride, and we know that there's been a lot of work that's gone behind that, and a lot of uh, coaches, staff, administration. I think that's why we're all excited uh, just to have this opportunity. It's been awesome. You mentioned that you just got back from a pretty exciting uh, race tonight. Um, you mentioned Courtney Wayman. She finished 12th in the steeplechase finals earlier. How proud are you of her? And, and what was that What was that race like uh, to be able to watch tonight? Well, um, Coach uh, Dildy Taylor's done a wonderful job with her and Whitney uh, Orton uh, Morgan, uh, who competed and finished, I think, uh, 13th or 14th in the uh, 5,000 as well. And to have two women make the final of these events and finish, you know, essentially 12th and, and 13th in the world is just amazing. And and she's worked hard. And obviously she's built that women's program back to, uh, you know, even higher probably than the, the days when uh, Patrick Shane uh, had, you know, won four national championships. So super proud of them. Uh, and, um, and, and yeah, so it's, and, and the race that Courtney ran today, tough race, just in the, in fact, we, we saw an Olympic record, uh, fall in the women's steeplechase and the, and the, between the Kenyans and the Ethiopians and the Bahrainians, uh, they just went out at pace, I think world record pace early on before they kind of, uh, settled down and it's tough when, uh, you see that happening ahead and you've got to run your own race. But I thought Courtney did a great job just kind of running her own race and, and finishing up as well as she did. Uh, so, you know, making it to the Olympics is just so darn hard. And then to make it to the final and then you just do the best that you can. And then sometimes uh, it's almost out of your control when they go for uh, for super, super fast, uh, you know, uh, times like that. Uh, a couple of guys that we haven't touched on yet that I do want to get your take on. Uh, what's impressed you most about James Corrigan's run at the Olympics? And then and then, what were your thoughts on, on how Kenneth Rooks did yesterday? You see, James Corrigan has had just kind of a almost folklore type uh, season in terms of him, you know, winning the Big 12, uh, going to the NCAA. He's running great in the prelims, not scoring at the, the final and then going to the Olympic trials and uh, looking very good in the prelims and then uh, moving from seventh to third place and snatching a spot on the Olympic team, but still having to chase that mark goes halfway, you know, it goes around, it goes the other side of the country and secures that spot. A lot going on in his life. And then he got married the next week. Yeah. And so I, it just his whole story, amazing. They need to write a, it's kind of a boys in the boat sort of uh 
a scenario of somebody could write that up at some point in time because and and the thing is he's going to have other olympians olympiads ahead at least a couple i believe um and to do what he did run as fast as he did under the pressure that he did to get here was amazing unfortunately at the end of the day when all is said and done when you've gone through all of that and i think this was his 12th steeplechase of the year that he ran because of his long college season, he was a little tapped out, and uh, and he just said, "Coach, I, I just felt dead." He said it was cool, it was a great experience. I learned a lot. The level of noise from the crowd was amazing and and cool. But he was just he was a tired boy uh, by the end of that, and so he did fail to advance. But then Kenneth Rooks, who I felt like was really in the heat of death uh, in terms of. Uh, just uh, really, really good talent in his th in the heat that he was in, and only five advanced, and there were uh, about eight guys, nine guys who had faster PRs than him going in there, and he just ran like it was a master class, really in tactics, uh, particularly coming off of a little bit of slower tactical race, put himself up in the front of the race where good things happen in the front of the race, not great things happen in the back, especially when you've got twelve highly motivated people running for a spot at the Olympic glory, uh, you've got to put yourself in good position. And then he battled well, sprint, sprinted well at the end and and got that second spot. It's second out of five. Uh, and, you know, sixth place was about uh, less than a second, I think, behind uh, them. So really good. It sets the table really well for uh, a, a really, gonna, again, another very, very competitive uh, day at the races tomorrow uh, for the final. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the way you describe Kenneth, I mean, just nothing seems to face him. I, I wish I could, I wish I had that type of uh, mentality where things just don't phase me. It's, I've gotten to know him a little bit, and that's certainly one of his strengths. Uh, I, I do want to ask you one more thing uh, before we let you go. And I'd like to have you preview the marathon on Saturday. It's got three Cougars, uh, Connor Mance, Clayton Young, and then Roy Linkler, who will be running for Team Canada. Just give us a, an idea of what you expect uh, in the marathon on Saturday. Yeah, what's really exciting for me is all three of those guys run, were teammates. You know, we, why how we didn't win a national championship with three Olympians, um, I yet to, to really figure out, other than we had some good competition. But uh, those guys are amazing. They're good friends. Uh, Rory is training down in Flagstaff, Arizona, but he came up uh, during this training block for about three weeks and, and did some running with the guys. So they feel, you know, they they know one one another very well, and and they're, the training that they do is is fairly similar. Um, and uh, you know, I can't speak directly of of his condition of where he's at, other than you know he did some great workouts with our guys, and I think he's been well prepared uh, by uh, Ryan Hall, who was a, a Olympian in the marathon as well. Um, but in terms of um, Connor and Clayton, uh, I think they've done everything uh, possible to to and really had a nice build. It, it hasn't been seamless, and and actually at the start of the build, we were kind of uh, trying to make sure that they were 100% healthy because uh, the fact that they got the Olympic A standard for the U.S. at Chicago Marathon and then had to turn around a little over three months later and defend their spots by going 1-2 at the trials, well, that was a huge ask. Two big races in a little over three months, and they were a little banged up at the, at the <laughs> you know, after the trials. And... Uh, you know, it took them a little bit. They each had, you know, Achilles or quad uh, injuries or, you know, little hiccups that they were working through. But once they got uh, solid, I think they've had six a really good 16-week block of training, which is what I usually like to have my marathoners do. 16 weeks is kind of the magic number, uh, you know, the four months of just uh, day in, day out, consistent hard training and uh i think uh, what i told them a long time ago was half the battle of this uh event is showing up on the starting line healthy and we've got you know 80 of the, the fastest marathoners in the world that will be gathered on saturday and i would say a third of them probably have a little niggling uh injury or something so that knocks the field down to about 50 and i i'm happy to say that that uh, our two guys are pretty healthy uh, right now. So, so now if they can just, uh, you know, execute a, a good race 
uh, then I like the chances of uh, uh, of running better than what they're currently ranked. Absolutely, we'll let, we'll pass along the uh, the BYU Sports Nation karma to you, and you can pass it along to the runners uh, coming up over the next couple of days. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. Great, thank you. Go Cougs. Go Cougs.